and welcome back to my vlog. Chapter 17 of Laugh and Live, Douglas Fairbanks, Assuming Responsibilities. Those who fear to assume responsibility necessarily take orders from others. The punishment fits the crime perfectly, and being self-inflicted, there is no injustice. It is true that many men possessed of great brain power play second fiddle to shallow-minded men of inferior wisdom from sheer lack of forcefulness on their own part. They lack the full quality of leadership while possessing all save one essential, courage. Fear abides in their hearts and spreads itself as a mantle of gloom over their supersensitive souls until finally they struggle no more. Henceforth, they are doomed and become the subject of apology on the part of friends and relations. He's all right, they say, but he suffers from over-refinement. He lacks something. We cannot make out just what. It is altogether too bad, for he is such a superior man among his social equals. We must take our hats off to those who have the goodness of heart to make allowance for our shortcomings. A disinterested listener, however, is seldom taken into camp by such well-intended arguments. He knows that friend-husband or friend-brother, as the case may be, needs some sort of swift kick that will stir his combativeness into action, that will cause him to turn upon his mental inferior and have it out with him then and there, once and for all. As a courage builder, fighting for justice is not to be sneezed at. Courage can be built up just the same as any other soul quality. It is all a matter of early training as to which we start out with courage, or fear. Unthinking parents have a lot to do with the propagation of fear in the hearts of children. A neglectful father plus a fear-stricken mother constitute the most logical forces which tend toward the overdevelopment of fear in a child. Once the seed is thoroughly implanted, the growth can be depended upon. How to get rid of it later is not so easy to figure out. Had the child been born with a club foot, these same parents would have spent their last dollar in an effort to straighten it into natural condition. They could see the unshapely foot day by day with their own eyes. And so could their neighbors. But the fear-warped little brain, struggling for courage with which to combat its weakness, needs must battle alone with chances largely against it. The mere thought of what is in store for this little one as it stumbles along from one period to another, fearful of this and fearful of that, is disconcerting to say the least. We can almost trace our friend, second fiddle, directly back to such a childhood. We can almost hear his fond mother shout, Keep away from the brook, darling. You might get your feet wet and catch your death of cold. Another well-known and highly respected admonition belong, belonging to childhood's hour is, Come in, dreary, it's getting dark. Bogeyman will get you if you don't watch out. Some years later, when little son runs breathless into the home portal after being chased from school by some terrible boys, we can hear this same little mother as she storms about the place and tells what Papa must do about the matter. According to her notion, if teachers could not control the criminal element among the, their pupils, then it was high time for the police to step in. Never a word about little son taking his own part. Father listens in silence and half formulates the notion of going direct to the parents and laying down the law, while, his little, while little son listens in fear and trembling in anticipation of what is coming to him if father carries out his threat. Tall oaks from little acorn, acorns grow if the twig is not bent in the sprouting. Little son is bound to grow into manhood someday, and when he arrives, he must have one particular attribute, courage. Somehow he will get along if he has that. He may also wear a club foot or a hunchback, but with courage as a running mate, he will assume his responsibilities and become a force in the world. Once a great orator sat upon a rostrum listening to a speech by a man who cautioned his countrymen against taking steps to defend the national honor. We'll outlive the taunts of those who would drag us into war, he bellowed forth. Whereupon the orator jumped to his feet and with clarion voice shouted, God hates a coward, and then sat down again. Dazed at first, the vast throng sat stupefied, but only for a moment. Then, as one man, they jumped to their feet and, by reason of prolonged cheering, gave national impulse to a thought which has since sermonized from thousands of pulpits. The orator had simply paraphrased and put pep into the old biblical slogan, 
the Lord helps those who help themselves. The effect was electrical. The whole country rallied to the idea with the result that we saved ourselves from war by showing the solid front of being ready and willing to defend ourselves. Everything that tends to build up courage is an asset in life. The more we have of it, the further we go, and the more interesting our lives become. For the man of the lion heart all things unfold, and unto him the timid must bring their offerings. No one of ordinary gumption consults the human flivver. Advice from him would be unavailing. His point of view would be inadequate. His ability, ability to advise impotent. We go to the man who does things and say to him, Here is my little idea. Do you want to help me put it over? If it is good, he does. If not, his experience tells him so, for men of courage are naturally possessed of large vision. Their lack of fear has given them right of way over vast areas of the world of action. They fail only as their lights go out forever. With courage we order our own lives and take orders only from those of superior wisdom. This we can never afford not to do. The courageous man of largest vision commands by his power to reason logically and therefore assumes the air of comradeship rather than overseer or boss. Only through lack of moral and physical courage are we to become the slaves of these. Courage, the child of hope, the despair of failure. Born of good cheer, it, link, it links its fate with the higher attributes and tramples underfoot the fears which spring up before it. When sown early into the hearts of the young, its companionship becomes an unerring in its efficiency for good throughout their lives. And thus ends chapter 17, Assuming Responsibilities. So take responsibility for making it a great day, and bye for now.